Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. Kusuo is a young paranormal who has spent his entire life trying not to attract anyone's attention, but when the festival day approaches, he risks being discovered and must now use all his powers to prevent the worst from happening. Today we will recap the story of the 2017 movie, Psychic Kusuo. 16 years ago, a couple who had been trying to get pregnant finally managed to have their first child, naming him Seiki Kusuo. Although his parents were totally normal, the pink-haired boy was born with super abilities, learning to talk at just 10 days old and levitate at 1 month old. Even though they find it very strange, the couple believes that it is some kind of blessing and decides not to take him to a laboratory, choosing instead to raise him on their own. Because of this, Seiki lived a fairly comfortable childhood, but now that he is in his teens, his powers have become a curse. Even though he is almost omnipotent, the boy cannot use his advantages to win money in casinos, since he would certainly be arrested for cheating. Besides this, his ability to read minds doesn't make it any easier when it comes to winning a girl over, since they are not always thinking about romantic things, and this can ruin the mood. It turns out that with such insane powers, Seiki can do almost anything, and life ends up getting extremely easy, losing all fun. Because of this, Kusuo feels extremely unlucky and does everything possible to look normal, getting average grades and always placing third or fourth in competitions. To make matters worse, the boy cannot control his abilities, so he uses a pair of antennas in his head to stabilize his powers so that he does not accidentally destroy the city. But because of this, Seiki is forced to hypnotize his classmates so that they do not perceive the object in his head. At school, the teacher announces that the annual PK High School Festival will take place next month and warns everyone to behave, because if they get into trouble, they will have no more events next year. Although he thinks the festival is stupid, Kusuo always takes the opportunity to get away from the crowd and spend some time alone, and since he doesn't want to miss this, he decides to make sure that nothing wrong happens during the event. After the teacher finishes speaking, another student named Hiro comes to the front of the class and announces that he will be the class representative, in charge of designing the activity they will do for the festival. Nevertheless, they are in a democracy and the class does not accept his idea of having an origami exhibition. Instead, they decide to collect oddly shaped stones around campus and present the objects to the other classes. After class, Nendo, a rather odd-looking boy with Uncle Grandpa's chin, comes up behind Seiki and covers his eyes, surprising the telepath. Because of his abilities, Kusuo can sense the presence of everyone who approaches from at least 200 meters away, but because his mind is completely blank, Nendo is never detected by him, always catching him off guard. As soon as Seiki notices his presence, the Asian Crimson Chin invites him to go rock hunting together, and the boy tries to refuse, but is interrupted by Shun, a completely lunatic boy who believes that a secret society is trying to destroy the world, the Dark Reunion. Afraid that there might be someone listening in on the conversation, the weirdo takes the two of them to the roof of the building and reveals that he has found a letter from the organization in his closet, promising that they will attack during the festival. Even unaware of his colleague's powers, Shun asks for help in dealing with the New World Order and Seiki pretends to accept, even though he is sure that none of it is real. One week before the PK festival, Kusuo is sitting at his desk when he begins to overhear a conversation in a girl's circle, where an overpopular girl named Kokomi Teruhashi is encouraged by her friends to enter the Miss PK contest, which will elect one of them as the prettiest girl in the school. Despite being extremely vain, Teruhashi pretends she has no chance and recommends another friend to participate, while in her mind, Seiki can see that she doesn't want to participate because she thinks she would win without difficulty. Listening to everything going through her mind, Kusuo says that he is not attracted to Kokomi, but that she seems to be interested since he ignored her when they met on vacation. On this day, Teruhashi greeted Seiki in the park thinking that he would spend all summer thinking about her, but since he only gave a casual greeting and did not sigh for her, the girl was completely outraged. Thinking he couldn't respond properly because he was shocked by so much beauty, she decides to greet him again, but this time Kusuo decides to ignore her, leaving the girl even more upset. Finding it impossible for someone not to be interested in her, Kokomi assumes that Seiki thought he was delirious and decides to talk to him one more time, this time touching him to make sure she isn't a mirage. But when she tries to do so, Kusuo sidesteps her and continues on his way as normal, getting out of sight and teleporting away from her shortly thereafter. Once she notices that he has disappeared, Teruhashi thinks it was all a hallucination and interprets this as a sign that she is in love with the boy, becoming obsessed with him and trying to get close in many different ways, but is always rejected. On the day of the festival, Seiki is having breakfast with his parents when a cup suddenly breaks, which makes his mother think it is some kind of bad omen, but since he doesn't believe in such things, Kusuo decides to just ignore it and walk to the festival calmly, 
planning to use his powers to avoid any incident. Before the event begins, the whole gang gathers one last time and shows off the various stones they have found, but the one that stands out the most is Eren Kuboyasu's, which is stained a reddish hue. Upon seeing the object, Kusuo remembers that Eren is a former delinquent who was recently transferred to PK High School to change his life, but who, despite trying to hide his criminal past, acts like a madman whenever he can. Imagining that the ink is actually blood, Seiki goes back to the corridor where he continues to be pursued by Teruhashi, who plans to create several coincidences for them to be alone, not imagining that the boy can read her mind and already knows everything she is up to. Excited about her plans, Kokomi decides to talk to Seiki, but just as she tries to call him, a group of demented people show up and introduce themselves as members of Teruhashi's fan club, begging her to participate in the Miss PK contest. Taking advantage of her distraction, Kusuo decides to teleport outside and ends up in the illusionism show of Uryoku, a student from another class. Seeing that the boy is using his own mother as an assistant, Seiki feels that something can go wrong and decides to stay there to help if needed. When the show begins, the magician explains that he will be tied up and placed in a box with chains, having three minutes to get out before his assistant starts sticking some blades through the holes. Upon hearing about the illusion, Seiki thinks that there is a great chance that this will go wrong and teleports into the box to get the magician out, but Ryoko has managed to perform the trick and is no longer inside. Since he has to wait 10 minutes between each teleport, Kusuo just watches as the illusionist's mother pierces the box with her blades, forcing him to squirm to avoid being hit. After three minutes have passed, Seiki breathes a sigh of relief that he has managed to dodge the swords when Uryoko's mother announces that they will use a crane to drop the box from a height of 30 meters. When the cable is broken, the audience watches in fear the boy turning into mashed potato, but at the last second before the box hits the ground, Seiki manages to avoid damage by jumping at the moment of impact, completely ignoring the inertia. As if all this madness wasn't enough, Uryoko's mother throws a gallon of fuel into the box and decides to set it on fire, forcing Kusuo to freeze the object from the inside, preventing the flames from advancing. Completely insane, the old woman says that they will now smash the box with a steamroller, but just as the machine is about to hit him, Seiki realizes that the 10 minutes have passed and he can already teleport away. Just then, the magician reappears on top of the stage, drawing the attention of the crowd while Seiki spawns across the courtyard, thinking about how close he came to being crushed. Meanwhile, on the other side of the school, Teruhashi gives in to her fan club's request and decides to participate in the beauty contest, but as a judge, which leaves all the boys quite dissatisfied. Frustrated, Shun turns away from the crowd and starts walking toward the back of the school, when one of the Dark Reunion members appears and starts talking to him, leading him to the group's meeting place. There, the boy meets the other members and is introduced to Moonlight Butterfly, the leader of the group, who claims that Shun is a former member of the Dark Reunion. At this point, the boy reveals that he was once one of the most respected warriors of this squad, but that he deserted when he learned of their true plans, stole the Stone of Destruction, and has been pursued ever since. Because of this, he was forced to use a forbidden spell to become a spirit and infiltrate Shun's body. Still, the cult leader says he can forgive him and offers an opportunity for Shun to return to the group, but since the boy denies the invitation, Moonlight Butterfly sees no other option but to use his powerful laser pen against the former member. At this point, the leader of the Dark Reunion reveals that there are seven sacred spheres on campus that are capable of destroying the group, and that they have come to the school precisely to destroy the objects, making Shun promise to find them and eliminate the sect before they hurt anyone else. Meanwhile, Hero is inviting people to the school marathon when Nendo appears behind him, saying that he also wants to participate in the race, which will give the winner the right to watch Kokomi for 10 minutes. Worried that someone will get hurt, Kusuo follows the marathon runners who are safe for a while, but refusing to lose to Nendo, Hero starts running wildly, crossing the sign and almost getting hit by cars. Despite appearing sedentary, Nendo is extremely fast and can catch up with the red-haired Rock Lee with extreme ease, managing to keep up with him while eating a can of corn stew. Refusing to lose, Hiro continues to advance wildly through the streets, forcing Kusuo to use his psychokinesis to alter the traffic lights and make the cars levitate over his friend. Still, Nendo catches up with him and says that he took a break to buy another drink, offering a can of bean soup to his friend, but as Hiro refuses to accept, the boy eats the canned food while running backwards, managing to keep the advantage anyway. Near the finish line, Hero decides to take drastic measures and tells him that there is a sumo wrestler on the other side of the field. His friend stops to watch, and so he wins the marathon with this dirty trick. When he realizes he has been tricked, the Asian Crimson Chin decides to take revenge and applies the 1000 years of death jutsu on Hero. 
making everyone laugh in his face. Inside the school, Aaron opens his locker and sees a letter from his former gangmates, calling him to meet them across campus. Since he is quite different now, Kuboyasu decides to walk in front of his former companions while laughing because they can't recognize him. At this moment, Shun passes by carrying two bowling balls and is noticed by the criminals, who decide to ask if the boy knows any Kuboyasu. Upon hearing the name, Shun immediately points to Aaron, who orders him to get out of there. Alone with the delinquents, Kuboyasu says he has no time to play, and the leader of the group uses his bat to hit him, but this ends up awakening the wild instinct of the former delinquent, who begins to attack them with his bare hands. Inside the school, Kusuo is still worried about the possible incidents at the festival, but since Teruhashi manages to find him and won't let go of his tail, he is forced to give in and accepts her invitation to go to the haunted house, planning to get attached to him. As the two pass by Koro Sensei's room, Nendo approaches the couple and offers to go along with them, thwarting Kokomi's plans to be alone with the protagonist. Inside, Teruhashi pretends to be quite frightened while Kusuo remains reassured ah he can see the other students through the walls. At the end of one of the corridors, one of the boys tries to scare the group and ends up fainting when he sees the size of Nendo's chin, leaving them free to steal some props and pass themselves off as ghosts. After they leave the haunted house, the two boys go to wash up, and Nendo ends up stealing Seiki's glasses, activating his power to turn anyone who looks at him to stone. Knowing that his friend will only be back to normal after 24 hours, Seiki decides to drop him off at his class's rock exhibit, drawing everyone's attention to his class. To avoid further trouble, Kusuo calls his mother and asks her to look for the spare glasses that are in the room, but since the woman is terrified of her son's mess, she refuses to go in there and the boy must find a way to solve this on his own. While going around the school looking for other glasses, Seiki ends up petrifying several students. Not knowing what to do, Kusuo decides to hide in the gym's storage room and finds Teruhashi inside, who appears to be up to something. As he has no time to lose, the boy ignores her and asks her to leave him alone, but as soon as the girl complies, Seiki realizes that Kuboyasu is still fighting outside. Seeing that Kusuo is watching, Eren says that he was just doing some weightlifting and tries to disguise it, but when he realizes that his colleague doesn't care and just wants the glasses, he decides to hand them over to buy his silence. Finally being able to see, Seiki realizes that the professor is coming and heals the criminals, reversing the state of their bodies momentarily so that they can escape, saying that he knows about his past and will tell everyone if he gets into trouble again. After solving this situation, Seiki uses his powers to make a kind of substitution to recover his glasses, ending once and for all the possibility of petrifying someone. Thinking his troubles are over, the boy prepares to teleport away and relax, but Teruhashi appears again and invites him to a couple's game. Since he has no interest in this, the boy rejects it and prepares to leave, but before he can do so, Kokomi's fan club shows up saying that they will eliminate him for staying too long around the girl. At this point, Teruhashi decides to intervene and keeps distracting the demented ones to get Seiki to run, but they don't give up and start running after the two, cornering them in the gym's storage room and sticking the lock. Once they arrive at the place, Kusuo begins to read the girl's thoughts and discovers that this was her plan all along. In fact, it was Teruhashi who set up the marathon, the dark reunion and Kuboyasu's challenge, all to keep Seiki away from his friends. Finally, she forced her fan club to chase them to this place and lock them up with super glue, all so they could be alone and without anyone to get in their way. While Seiki thinks of a way out without revealing his powers, Shun manages to gather seven bowling balls and takes them to the lair of the Dark Reunion, which is really just a bunch of Kokomi fans in disguise. As soon as the boy arrives, the leader of the group begs him not to use the spheres or they will be disintegrated, but that is exactly what Shun plans to do. After putting the balls in position, the boy begins a ritual and the sect members run to all sides, leaving Shun completely alone and thinking that he has finally beaten the organization. Outside, the criminals return with the rest of the gang and begin to threaten Kuboyasu, who cannot see them and does not understand what is happening. From the gym, Seiki notices the group's presence and thinks of a way to prevent the worst from happening, but since he is stuck in there and can't get out without Teruhashi getting suspicious, he decides to turn the whole group back in time by making them disappear in front of everyone. After expending so much energy to save Kuboyasu, Seiki is completely exhausted and collapsed, but this eventually affects his telekinetic powers and Kokomi comes out of hypnosis, finally noticing the antennae in the boy's hair. Strangely enough, the girl starts fiddling with the object and removes one of the antennae, causing all of Seiki's power to be released at once. Because of this, the sensors all over the planet begin to collapse and error messages appear all over the space station, warning about the end of the world. At that moment, Seiki wakes up and tries to lean on a wooden object, instantly disintegrating it. 
Upon seeing the scene, Teruhashi is startled and ends up dropping the antenna, which falls somewhere in the warehouse. As soon as he realizes that something is missing in his head, Seiki turns to the girl and asks for the object, but the room freezes before she can find it, making the boy suspect that they are no longer on Earth. Since he has no other option, Kusuo decides to wait for Teruhashi to faint due to thin air and finally begins to act, using his abilities to recover the antenna and finally bring the building back to Earth, but his problems are not over yet. After all this chaos, Seiki knows he will have no way to explain himself and decides to use the rest of his power to go back in time a whole day, being forced to revive the festival and keep everyone safe, but matching Kokomi's advances and doing the right things this time. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.